Hello, this is Don Saito with ERP Efficiency Experts. Today we're going to go over how to export and import data out of and into Business Central using configuration packages. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to configuration packages. And what we can do here is we can create a tool to export data or import data. So for today, we're going to do something very simple. We're going to export some items, and then we're going to import some items. So first, I'm going to click New, and I'm going to create a configuration package. So I'll call it Items. And down here in the table ID, I choose the table that I want to work with. So in this case, most of them are self-explanatory. You can just look over the names, and most of them will just make sense to you. And we'll go ahead and click on Item. I'm going to click off the line and I'm going to click back onto the line. And that's going to show me there's 144 fields available in this particular table. So I can go ahead and click on that. And maybe I don't want to export all of the fields in the item table. Maybe I just want to export a few. So what I can do is I want to select the fields I want to include. If I look at this column, it says include field and everything is included by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear those out. By clicking clear included, I will clear all of them out except for the primary key. Primary key is the main fields or field that defines these records as unique records. So the item number is what makes an item unique. So that's what we call the primary key. This one will always be included and sometimes there could be more than one field that consists of the primary key. In that case, all primary key fields will always be included by default. Now I can go ahead and check on any other fields I want to include. I'm going to click Edit List, and then I'll simply click on the fields that I want to include. So I'll take a description, base unit of measure, and so on. Any other fields that I'm interested in, I could click on. So we'll take vendor number as well. So now I have selected the fields. I'm going to go ahead and press the back arrow. What you'll notice is these numbers are not updated instantly. So what I have to do is I just need to refresh my page and then I will be able to see that update. So I pressed F5 and that updated my screen. You can see now that four fields are included out of the 144 fields. And you can see that we have 29 database records, so we have 29 items in the system right now. I can go ahead and click on number of database records, and it will show me the list of items that are available. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and export these four fields. To do that, if you notice, there's an export to Excel at the top here. There could be more than one line here. And if I'm only interested in exporting this item table, I prefer to use the export here at the line level. So export to Excel. Do I want to continue? Yes. And you can see at the top here, it's created an Excel file. So I can go ahead and click open. And that has opened up Excel for me. And you can see it has created my export of the fields that I'm interested in. If I wanted to import data, I could simply add them to the spreadsheet and re-import this file. Now this is not all of the required fields in an item table, but this will give you an idea of how this works. So I'll go ahead and I'll create some new items right in Excel. Okay, now that I have my items created, I'll go ahead and save this Excel spreadsheet and close it. Now what I'll do is I'll import from Excel and you can see it has found the file and I'll click import and now what we're looking at here is number of package records these are the number of records in the package so click on that and we can see our data now the items that I created you can see here at the bottom test item test item two and three so these will be created. Now you don't have to import all of the same item data again for all these existing items, but it doesn't hurt anything as long as you haven't changed anything. So it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. But I will go ahead and now apply this data. You can do it one at a time. So if I wanted to click apply data, I could do it that way on each record. Apply data. Apply data. Apply data. Now that's super slow if you're going to do it one at a time. So preferred method is to select everything and then apply data. If the records disappear off the screen, that means they were successfully updated. So now you can see there are zero package records. We processed them all. We applied them all. So there's nothing left to do. And we can see there's no errors at all. And then we can see we now have 32 database records. We had 28, but we created four new ones. And so now we have 32. I can go ahead and click on 32 and I can see 
uh, the new items 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000. Okay, so that's a very simple way to show you how to export and import data into Business Central. This is very useful when you're first converting from a, another system into Business Central. Let's take a look at a few features. So one thing we can do is when we're exporting data, we can set filters so we don't export all of the records. We might run into a situation where we may want to export only some of the records. So how can we do that? I'm going to go ahead and click on the table, and then I'm going to click the table button here, and you can see I can set filters. So let's say I want to just export items with a certain item category. So I will look for item category. And I will click OK. And here's where I can set filters. Assuming I know what my item categories are, if I don't, I can simply search on item categories and look and see what they are. But you can see we have different categories, chairs, desks, table, furniture, etc. Uh, let's say I just want to export chairs, for example. I can come into here and set a filter on chair. If I wanted to do more than one filter, I could go ahead and put a pipe, which is shift backslash, and do desk, for example. But in this case, we're just going to do chairs. So now I've set a filter, and what I'll do is I'll export this to Excel. Let's open up the file. And you can see we've only exported chairs. Now when you're importing data, the filter is not really relevant there. It's just going to import all the data that you have in there. The filters are for exporting data. Now let's talk about a few advanced features here. So this one says delete table records before processing. So this is a very powerful and potentially dangerous feature. If I click this on and I import any items, it's actually going to delete the entire table before it imports my items. This is good when you're converting to Business Central from a foreign system and you want to freshly load the item file and clear out anything that happens to be in there. Otherwise, you want to stay away from this field. In fact, what I would recommend you do is you just hide this field because it's easy enough to check this on and then accidentally delete your entire table. So what I would recommend is personalize your screen using a gear icon like so. And then what you're going to do on this delete table records before processing is you're just going to hide that field. You can always come back in here and add it using the plus field button. And then that's going to show up over here. And then you can drag and drop it back on your screen if you need to use it. But it's such a dangerous field to use that I would hide that on your screen by default. We don't want anyone accidentally checking that. All right, let's take a look at a few more features here. I'm going to go ahead and click Edit List. So this one here, Validate Field. What this does, if this is on, there can be programming code behind these fields. So for example, when you fill in base unit of measure, there could be some code on that field that whenever you enter in something and press enter, it does something somewhere else. In many cases, you just want to leave validate field on. It'll execute the code behind it. In some cases, you may not want to execute the code behind it. You kind of have to know what the situation is. I would use it by default. Another nice feature is this one way over here called create missing codes. So let's say I'm entering in some units of measure. The unit of measure is actually a table, and if there are no codes in this table, this will create the codes automatically upon importing it. So if I'm creating an item file, and I have a base unit of measure of feet, for example, and the base unit of measure table doesn't have feet in it, this checkbox will ensure the system creates that unit of measure automatically in the unit of measure table, and it will also import that data into this field. This is extremely useful, especially when you're importing data from a foreign system. Sometimes when you're importing data, you may encounter errors. For example, if the data in the field is incorrect in some way, you may run into an error. So let's show an example of that. So we have these four fields included here. Let's see if we can include another field and we're going to force an error to occur. So I'm going to go ahead and click Edit List. We're going to look for something where we can cause it to mess up. I'm going to go ahead and choose Type. And I know the Type field has certain options. For example, it could be Inventory, it could be a non-stock, or it could be a service item. But I'm going to put something in here that's totally incorrect and we'll see how to deal with errors. 
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and export this to Excel. And let's open that file up. All right, now you notice we have a new field called invent type, which is inventory. So I'm going to pretend to create a new item in here. And I'm going to put something totally invalid in here. So I know inventory is a valid choice. I'm going to put in blue. Uh, that's definitely not a valid inventory type. We'll go ahead and save this. And then let's go ahead and import from Excel. All right, we'll click import. You can see there's 11 package records. All right, so here's our record blue. You can see that the data here is invalid. I will go ahead and click on show error. It says blue is not a valid option. Valid options are inventory service or non-inventory. So it tells me pretty much what I need to correct. And I'll go ahead and come in here and I'll say inventory and just fix it like that. And then click apply data and then it properly processes it. Now this, I didn't change any of this data so I could apply it or I could simply just delete these, which is what I'm going to do because I don't care about those. The last feature I'd like to show you is how to map data. So let's say your data is coming in with one value, but you want to change that to a different value in Business Central. So let's go ahead and look at how that would work. Let's go ahead and click on the number of fields included. Let's take a look at the type field. So as you saw, type has different values such as inventory, non-stock, or service. What we can do is do a mapping. So let's say the old value in the old system for inventory was called INV. And we're going to convert that to inventory, which is the value in BC. And let's say the old value in the system for service items was service. And the new version is the word service spelled out. And then maybe they called non-inventory in I in the old system, but in Business Central it's called non-inventory. So now we have defined a mapping. So when the data comes in with one value, we're going to map it to a different value. So we can do simple transformations of data within Business Central. To see how this would work, we'll go ahead and create an export here. And we'll open this up. So we're going to pretend here that our source file has a value of INV instead of inventory. Like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to import this file and I expect the mapping to translate this to inventory. So let's see if it's working. We'll go Excel, import from Excel, click our file, click import, and we have our package records here. So you can see the data has imported from Excel as expected, and let's go ahead and apply this data, and it should translate it. And as you can see, it's processed all the data 100% perfectly, and we have no more records to process. I hope you learned something new today. This is how to use configuration packages to export data in and out of Business Central. My name is Don Saito with ERP Efficiency Experts. If you need any help with Business Central, feel free to look at our contact information in the description. Thank you very much.